could Kayla Williams really stay in school in 2024 instead of coming out and playing in the NFL? Let's discuss. You are locked on Cardinals. Your daily Arizona Cardinals podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Alex Clancy here. Follow me on Twitter at Clancy's Corner. Follow the podcast at Locked On AZ Cards. Thank you for making Locked On Cardinals your first listen each and every day, free wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube. Today's episode of Locked On Cardinals is brought to you by the Game Time app. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NFL for twenty bucks off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. So I had a whole thing built out today that I'm going to scrunch into two segments talking about the three top position groups to watch on Sunday when the Cardinals travel across the country to play in the early time slot against the Washington Commanders in week one. But then this morning, Caleb Williams' father was quoted in GQ Sports magazine, and he said some things that I wanted to discuss. So let me pull up the exact quote and the exact quote here is, quote, the funky, this is his father, Carl. The funky thing about the NFL draft process is he'd almost, Caleb, be better off not being drafted than being drafted first. The system is completely backwards. The way the system is constructed, you go to the worst possible situation. The worst possible team, the worst organization in the league, because of their desire for parity, gets the first pick. So it's the gift and the curse. I mean, I've talked to Archie Manning. His career was shot because he went to a, a horrible organization. I've talked to Lincoln Riley, and Kyler Murray struggled because of where he was drafted. Baker Mayfield struggled mightily because of where he was drafted. The organizations matter. He's got two shots at the apple. So if there's not a good situation, the truth is he can come back to school. Okay. While that's not an irrational conversation to have, it's an irrational conversation to have. Unless there was the greatest trade ever made by a team to a good team initially getting their draft picks, and then that team just forfeiting all games to where that team that received their pick went up to number one, you're going to go to a bad team with the number one overall pick. It's going to happen. And on top of that, and we've seen this more recently through whatever reason, whatever, you know, there are myriad umbrellas you can put this under, but dysfunctionality in organizations is much more prevalent than people think. How many teams have won more than three Super Bowls? How many teams haven't won one? It's the wildest proclamation that's like, oh, number one over, it's going to be a bad team, so he's going to go back. What's it going to be the next year? What's it going to be the next year? So while when it comes, when it pertains to the Cardinals, I don't care. I don't care. I I do just implore Cardinals fans to just eye on the prize it. Just eye on the prize it. We don't know what's going to happen in 2023. We don't know if Kyler Murray comes back in week six. This is an unnecessary conversation to have. We don't know. So while always looking to the future, there's more possibility, which lends more excitement because you don't want to watch exactly what's happening in the 2023 season for the Cardinals, which isn't probably going to be great. Thinking that the savior is on the other side of this season can be a fool's errand in and of itself. I was Caleb Williams going to be, Pretty good, probably. I implore people to just run your own race as it pertains to being an Arizona Cardinal fan. Okay. I worked in sports radio and, you know, podcasts here for 12 years, 13 years now. It's never easy to be an Arizona Cardinals fan. Okay. And we're finally starting to see a little bit of a shift. We're finally starting to see a little 
just twinge of difference. And expecting everything to happen overnight, you, you can't. This is the hard reset the Arizona Cardinals needed, okay? So what a college football player's father says about his future when this season is just about to start, it shouldn't have any sort of impact on how you view your favorite team. It just shouldn't. Embrace the changes now. For everydayers, yeah, you've heard me say this with great redundancy, that I'm a Kyler Murray guy. I think that he was held back by his coach for four years. Um, and I think that they have their future quarterback already on the roster. There's a lot of uncertainty surrounding how many games he plays and and what it's going to look like when, like what the team's going to look like when he does come out there. But we don't know. We don't have that answer. So anybody saying, oh, he's going to suck or, oh, he's going to be great. We don't know. And that, you know, that's like, I, I'm i never that argument guy. It's like, well, you know, this is going to happen. Well, how do you know? It's in the future. How do you know? Shut up. That's not what I mean. We, But with Kyler Murray, like, when coming off injury is completely different. Like, if you were playing in week one, we know probably within the first six weeks of the season what Kyler Murray's future with this organization was going to be. But with the uncertainty of when he's coming back and the uncertainty of what he's going to look like when he does come back and what this roster is going to look like, what the defense is going to be like, there's just too many question marks to really solidify a stance on one side or the other. But to say that the Arizona Cardinals would be the reason why Caleb Williams would go back to college, if that's the case, forget him. There will always be great quarterbacks coming out. Now, with all of that, this is not to say that Caleb Williams' father speaks for him. The, like the last line was, he could go back to college. That's not to say that he will. Like there are people that are, you know, on Twitter like, oh, well, this means he's going back. It's like, shut up. No, it doesn't. There's nothing in that quote from Caleb Williams' father that says anything. Something that we didn't know already or that there was any sort of indicator of his, if he was going to go back to college, if he didn't like the team that went number one or number two overall. Because keep in mind, it's going to be the same situation in 2025. It's just going to be two other bad teams looking for their quarterback for the future. Lockdown Cardinals, your team every day. Now let's get to the task at hand. That wasn't my fault. I had to do that. I had to do that segment. I had to, I had to, I had to. The three position groups that should be watched most closely, most closely, yeah, on Sunday for various reasons. I will discuss all of them as we roll on here. Locked on Cardinals, your team every day. This episode of Locked on Cardinals is brought to you by Harry's. All right. So here's the thing. As you've seen over the last however many seasons, this is going to be my seventh season with Locked On, I've had a beard for the entirety. That's not to say that I don't use razors daily. Okay. And our sponsor, Harry's, has some of the best. Why do I shave? I shave for you. I shave to be presentable on Zoom meetings. I shave to be presentable on dates. I shave to be presentable at family functions. I shave for a whole bunch of different reasons. No matter why you shave, Harry's has you covered for the best shave of your life as a at a price that you'll love, okay? From their legendary high-quality razors to skin products like exfoliating face wash and hydrating lotion, Harry's gives you a premium shave without the premium price tag. You get better quality and a better price than other razors when you get Harry's delivered right to your front door, okay? The starter set is a $13 value for just 3 bucks at harrys.com slash NFL. It includes a five-blade German engineer razor, weighted handle, foaming shave gel, and a travel cover. Scheduled delivery for refills as low as two bucks, half what you pay for other blades. Okay, Harry's has the highest customer satisfaction in the shaving industry, and they'll still offer you 
they'll still offer you. They're still offering a no a no risk trial. Don't like your shave? No worries, it's on them. Get the best shave ever this summer with Harry's razors and skincare products. Get a thirteen dollars starter set for three dollars at Harry's.com slash locked on slash NFL. Sorry, that's Harry's.com slash NFL for a three dollar starter set. Second segment, Locked On Cardinals. Alex Clancy here. Thanks for hanging out. Thank you for making Locked On Cardinals your first listen free wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube. I'm not being defensive of the Arizona Cardinals. I'm being defensive of the idea that looking towards 2024 already is somewhat of a fool's errand. You got to see what you got. And this season... The growth test, the growth metric will not be directly correlated to wins and losses. It'll be towards as simply as I can put it in the most abstract way, seemingly. We'll see if it looks different (laughs) than it has. And I think that's the best way I can put it. Like it's abstract, but we'll see if it looks different. Sure. There's going to be X's and O's, different schemes, different players, you know, rookies playing prominent roles potentially. But let's see if this team looks different on game day. There's a couple of things that stick out about the last regime. And this isn't not these are just factual things. During their 7-0 start, 10 and 2 run, they lost in Detroit against a bad Lions team. That stuck out to me. It's like, okay, good teams don't lose that game. Well, sure, it's the morning time slot and it's across the country, blah, blah, blah. If you're vying for a Super Bowl, which they were through 12 weeks, two years ago, you don't lose to a team like that. You just don't. And they looked bad. They got beat up. Indianapolis on Christmas, when everybody was hurt, they got embarrassed at home by Carson Wentz. There are just games that you remember. That it was like, oh, they played hard and they just got beat by a team who played better that day. The Cardinals have beat themselves way more than other teams have beaten them over the last you know, three seasons. We'll give Kyler Murray's rookie year a pass. So what we're looking for is for things to look different in 2023. That's as simple and you know, abstract simultaneously as I can put it. So you're welcome for being confused. So there's top three, the position groups to watch on Sunday. Number one is the offensive line. The most important is the offensive line for myriad reasons. One, the front seven for Washington is their strength on defense. It just is. They're just, that's that's kind of been, you know, the, Ron Rivera came over there Namely, I mean, Chase Young was young and he's coming into a contract year. Um, You know, Deron Payne, like they've got guys. Montez Sweat, they've got guys. And not only is it just because their front seven is strong, it would have been, this would have been number one no matter what for me for week one. Because it's DJ Humphreys, it's Paris Johnson Jr., it's Will Hernandez. Like, it's, it's guys that are like, okay, so if this works this year, if the offensive line is more of a strength than a weakness in 2023, this could be a complete run-it-back situation. They brought Will Hernandez back after his one-year deal last year. DJ Humphreys is in the last year of his contract where he has no guaranteed money after this year. Paris Johnson Jr. was a sixth overall pick. So going into Sunday, it's going to be a fantastic test for this offensive line, regardless of who's plays, who, who plays quarterback. And it's what I'm most excited to see because if Paris Johnson Jr. works, that will go down. Like if Paris Johnson Jr. is a perennial pro bowler, that'll go down as a top five draft pick in the history of the organization. It's easier when you're up, but you know, Larry Fitzgerald's won, obviously, and then we can have conversations. But like if this works, with Paris Johnson, and you have the heir apparent to DJ Humphreys when he inevitably moves on, you'd think. Maybe not next year, but whatever. I mean, he's not getting any younger. And you've got a guy? 
That'd be badass. And this is the first, you know, this is the party. And we'll see. Now, if it doesn't work in week one, it's not, uh, you know, it's not, it's not a, you know, storm the storm the gates or whatever. It's not a, it's not a freak out moment, but it's like, if it does like, so say, I don't know, Josh Dobbs or Clayton, whoever it is, gets sacked like twice, but has time, can be elusive in the pocket, you know, whatever it is. And they actually have to hear, he actually has time to make throws. It's going to be a big win. And we'll see against one of the better front sevens in football. So that's the first position group for me, no doubt about it. And number two, that's even more important to me than the quarterback room. And I'm just giving it like, it doesn't matter who's, I, I still think it should be Clayton Tune at this point. It doesn't matter. They're not telling anybody. We'll probably know, I would assume tomorrow, Friday at the latest, but whatever. Like, it's not like an, I want to win this because <laughs> it does in, in, in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't matter. But I do think the Clayton Tune should start. He probably won't probably be Joshua Dobbs. If he's caught up to, you know, caught up to speed at that point, it's not good either way. So that's why I'm not really talking about it. We've talked about it a lot. This is like an honorable mention. There are two other position groups that I do want to discuss. And I'm going to, you know, we've got one more segment. So I've got time. Uh, we'll hit it next. This episode of Locked on Cardinals is brought to you by the Game Time app. I mean, this app is awesome. Can I just say that? Can that be the live read? No, okay, because this library is way better than, than just that. Buying tickets to your favorite events shouldn't be stressful. Okay, I've got the app on my phone. It's so fast. It's so easy to buy tickets for not just sports, music, comedy shows, theater, anything near you. Okay, killer deals on last minute tickets and their best price guarantee. You can stop stressing over tickets and start getting hyped for the fun you'll have. Okay, they've got. Flash deals and last minute tickets. So it's like, listen, you want to wait until right before a game starts or right into the first quarter, you can still buy tickets then. And the, and the prices drop. Okay. They're easy to find and buy tickets for every kind of event in your area. They have images of seat views. That's the cool part. Like, I mean, you know, whatever, 20 years ago when you're buying tickets, you're like, oh, I hope the seats look good. You can see your viewpoint from the seat that you're about to buy through the game time app. Okay. Forget planning months in advance. Game time has deals on tickets right up to the day of the event. Get exclusive flash deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, more, etc. Again, you can get images of your seats before you buy, so you know exactly what to expect when you're when you arrive. Snag the tickets without the stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NFL for twenty bucks off your first purchase. Terms do apply, but again, create an account and redeem um, redeem your code. Locked on NFL for 20 bucks off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. So I don't mean to gloss over the quarterback position. Obviously, it's the most important position. Football, like, I get it. But it's been discussed so much. So going into Sunday, with that strong front seven, the Washington's defense is, it's a top 15 defense. Maybe 15, maybe 12, maybe 10. Who knows? The quarterback position is going to have ripple effects for other positions. So the second position for me is the wide receiver position. And I, we, I just don't know what this is going to look like. It's going to be an adjustment. If you've done your fantasy football drafts, where does Hollywood Brown go? I had a 20 minute conversation with my buddy who drafted Hollywood Brown uh, in a draft that we had two nights ago. He's like, I took him in the eighth round. It's like, what are you supposed to do? Like he'd be a third round receiver. Fourth round, third round receiver with Kyler Murray. Now he's just dropped precipitously. So, you know, the quarterback play is going to be tough until Kyler Murray comes back. So what does that mean for the wide receiver group? What does that mean for Drew Petzing? Does that mean that they're going to run the ball 30% more than they would if Kyler Murray was there? Is it going to be the same game plan and you're just going to kind of figure out what it's going to be like when Kyler Murray comes back? Hollywood Brown. And it's not just like there's one guy with a question mark or two guys with a question mark surrounding him. Hollywood Brown's in a contract year. Rondo Moore can't stay healthy, but when he's healthy, he's great or has been great. Greg Dort seems to be the unsung hero of this wide receiver group over the last year and a half. And Michael Wilson's a rookie who balled out of camp. Then you've got Zach Ritz and Trey McBride. So I'll group them in together for pass catchers. What is this group going to look like? And 
by all accounts, Cardinals are going to pass a lot. They're going to pass a lot this year if they're down. So what's it going to look like? Who's going to be the wide receiver one? Is it for sure going to be Hollywood Brown? Is Michael Wilson going to be like, pair me with, uh, pair me with, uh, with Marvin Harrison Jr. And let's roll. Like, what's it going to look like? Um, and this, it, it fascinates me. It rivets me what this wide receiver group is going to be because if they've got something cooking here and we don't know, but if they've got something cooking and Kyler Murray comes back and Hollywood Brown did what he did or close to it in the first six weeks of last season where he put up over 600 yards, a bunch of touchdowns. He had like 15 targets a game for a chunk there. And Ronda Moore stays healthy. He's fast. And Michael Wilson is, is the outside wide receiver, a steal in the third round out of Stanford. You've got something cooking. Or on the other side, if they just can't adjust to the lesser level quarterback play until Kyler Murray comes back, it could be dumpster fire-ish. We just don't know. So that's why I'm so fascinated about that group. And then obviously on the defense, I could have gone one of two ways here. For me, it's the pass rush. I Like the honorable mention was going to be the cornerback specifically, Marco Wilson, Antonio Hamilton, and Control Clark. And then grouping in Buda Baker and Jalen Thompson, like that's kind of like a kind of know what that's gonna be because it wasn't really focused on this season. You know, drafting Garrett Williams was, but he's still unhealthy. Um if the Cardinals can find a pass rush, it will expedite defensive output exponentially. LJ Collier, Zayvon Collins, BJ Ojolari in spots. Cam Jordan. If the Cardinals pass rush gels and can put pressure, I'm not saying they have to get 10 sacks a week, but it's like, Sack totals, first of all, are one of the most overblown, like quarterback wins, are one of the most overblown numbers in sports because it's not directly correlated to production by a pass rush. The best friend of an inferior cornerback room is a pass rush. It's what allowed the Cardinals' defense to be so great at the start of the 2021 season. Pass rush was humming. Byron Murphy looked like a pro bowler. So going into Sunday, it's the inverse effect of the Cardinals offensive line against a really good uh, front seven. We're going to see right away what it's like against one of the better set front sevens in the NFL against an offensive line that's never played together, especially obviously because Paris Johnson never played an NFL game. It's going to be the inverse or the inverse effect with the pass rush playing against Sam Howell only started one game in his career. So if the Cardinals can't get home against Sam Howell and can't disrupt him, there's going to be more trouble down the road. If the Cardinals can hold serve against one of the better front sevens, you could be looking at the rest of the year like, huh, this offensive line may be one of the stronger suits, one of the stronger groups on this roster. Offensive line, wide receiver group, pass rush. Those are the three, I, I mean, your guess is as good as mine is what it's going to look like on Sunday. It's going to be fun. Bear with it. Understand that the ceiling has never been higher, at least over the last 20 years, for the Arizona Cardinals, even though they're at rock bottom right now. I'll be doing my crossover episode with David with uh, David Harrison of Locked on Commanders tomorrow. It's going to be fun. Full show. Get all your insight about the Washington Commanders, et cetera. Um, yeah. Alex Nancy Locked on Cardinals. I, me, will talk to you tomorrow.